Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos, Amelia Dyer, and The Gold Train. Tales of Hauntings, Murder, and Scary Mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on a brutal individual named Amelia Dyer and the strange truth behind the gold train. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos. Number 1. Amelia Dyer Baby farming was a typical practice in the Victoria era of England. Families or single mothers would commonly send away their infants to a wet nurse or sometimes even a more formal facility. Some were returned when they became toddlers and others were permanently given away. One woman who thrived in the business of taking care of children was Amelia Dyer. Born in 1836 in the village of Bristol, she was a shoemaker's daughter. Unlike most women of the time, she learned to read and write, later on becoming a nurse and midwife. Amelia married and had two children of her own, a boy and a girl. Although it's unknown what happened to her son, her daughter Polly became her assistant. Working as a midwife was difficult for Dyer, but a friend pointed her towards the business of rearing children or baby farming. It was more lucrative and less work, so soon she began advertising to the public, offering unwed, desperate mothers a place to leave their children behind for only 10 pounds. Desperate mothers responded, and after some convincing, the parent turned over their children without the possibility of further contact with them. Initially, Dyer tried to care for the infants, but at some point, intentionally or not, the babies began dying. She figured the sooner the babies died, the less she needed to spend on caring for them and the more money she could gain. The less of them she had around, the more room she had to take in more children and collect her 10 pounds. She began accepting more children for adoption and then give them what was called mother's friend, which was a syrup containing opium, which would quiet down the baby as it lay starving and neglected. Other times she would simply kill the child by strangling them. She did this for some time until the doctor became suspicious about issuing too many death certificates her way. In 1879, Amelia was arrested for neglect instead of murder or manslaughter, which should have been the charges. She served six months of hard labor, but later claimed this experience left her mentally ill. When she got out, instead of reforming, she expanded her work and took care in covering her tracks. After those death certificates became her downfall, she did away with them and began burying the babies, wrapping them in bags, weighing them down with bricks and tossing the remains underwater. She also moved with her family all around to places like Reading, Cardiff, and London, taking care not to stay in one place too long while disposing of babies at every stop. In March of 1896, a bargeman going up the Thames found a box lying close to the riverbank. When he opened it, he found the body of a baby girl between 6 to 12 months old, and so he informed police. The box also had a faint address on it, that of one Mrs. Thomas. Tracing the address, they found the home empty, but could tell the stench of death was around. They also found more evidence like adoption arrangements, letters from mothers asking about their children, pawn tickets, and edging tape, which was used to kill and strangle the babies. Police believe that up to 20 children were in the care of Amelia, aka Mrs. Thomas, in the last few months alone. But in the years of her operation in different places, she may have killed up to 400 babies. Amelia was arrested on April 4, 1896. After only four and a half minutes of deliberation by the jury, she was found guilty. Her daughter Polly and her husband were cleared of any suspicion, but Amelia was sentenced to death. Weeks before her execution, she filled out five exercise books worth of confessions. At 9 a.m., she was hanged on June 10, 1896. Number 2. The Gold Train Although there are countless legends surrounding the Nazis and their activities during the war and afterwards, one of the most recent ones uncovered is the legend of the Gold Train. It's believed the Nazis buried a German-era train inside a constructed underground tunnel in Lower Silesia sometime in 1945 
prior to the end of World War II. This wasn't just any type of train either. It's said to have contained more than 300 tons of gold. The Nazis looted gold, weapons, priceless art, jewelry, and other valuables from castles and mansions all around Eastern Europe. They packed all of this on the train and then drove it to the labyrinth of tunnels they cut all around Owl Mountain. Others say the train was diverted and entered into one of the tunnels nearby and hidden until it could be recovered. Since the end of the war, countless treasure hunters and history enthusiasts have been hunting for the treasure but without any luck. But more recently, it's said proof of the existence of the train has indeed showed up. In August of 2015, two people claimed they found the location of the gold train, saying someone told them about it on their deathbed. The two men were identified as Peter Koper from Poland and Andres Richter of Germany, co-owners of a mining company. Initially, the two made a secret negotiation with the Polish government of obtaining a 10% finder's fee in exchange for sharing the information of where the train was said to be located. The Polish government agreed, but then word of the gold train and the negotiation leaked to the public and led to a media circus. This was intensified by the Polish deputy culture minister, who said the images taken by ground-penetrating radar of the supposed location confirms with 99% probability that a train of 100 meters in length had been found. This statement, however, was contradicted by the governor, saying there is no absolute proof other than the claims that have been mentioned years before. By September of 2015, Koper and Richter came forward and also revealed images of ground-penetrating radar showing a 50-meter deep shaft along with something in it. In the same month, Polish authorities began sectioning off a portion of the woodlands nearby. Police were deployed to guard the area to prevent other treasure hunters from approaching it. Non-invasive means were initially used to assess the site, and there were two teams of deployed men to do the studies. The first team were those of Koper and Richter, while the second team were mining specialists. By December, the second team announced there was no evidence of a train, but there was slight evidence of a collapsed tunnel. In May of 2016, despite confirmation by outside sources there is no train in the area, Koper and Richter still secured permission to start digging. This dig involved 64 people, including geologists, chemists, archaeologists, military demolition experts and engineers along with volunteers. However, after seven days, the dig was halted because nothing was discovered. In the end, the image of what they thought was the train turned out to be nothing more than natural ice formations. The upside is that even if the train didn't turn out to be real, or at least not in the area they thought it was, the town has admitted the reports have caused a tourism boom. Today, the search for the mysterious gold train still continues. So there were two of the most vicious and secret stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted Twos is always sure to show you why. If you enjoyed this video then please remember to subscribe and check out some of our other videos we know you'll love. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.